Back to the election here at home. Democratic New York Congressman Richie Torres re-elected overwhelmingly to another term this week. He's blaming his own party's progressive wing for Donald Trump's big victory. Torres says, quote, Trump, Donald Trump has no greater friend than the far left, which has managed to alienate historic numbers of Latinos, blacks, Asians, and Jews from the Democratic Party with absurdities like defund the police or from the river to the sea or Latinx. And Congressman Torres, whose district is in the Bronx, joins me now. Congressman, thank you. Congratulations on your reelection. Um, what do you mean by Donald Trump has no greater friend than the far left? Look, the Republicans are masterful at weaponizing the words of the far left against the Democratic Party. And the losses among voters of color, particularly Latinos, is nothing short of a catastrophe for the party, right? Take as an example, Star County, which is the most Latino county in the country, right? 60% of the county voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. In 2024, Donald Trump won nearly 60% of the vote. He won Latino men by more than 10 percentage points, right? There are reliably blue states where we've had real losses. Donald Trump came within five points of winning New Jersey, 12 points of winning New York. He won 30% of the vote in the Bronx, which is one of the most democratic and Latino counties in America. If that is not a wake-up call, then I'm not sure what would be. And we ignore those wake-up calls at our own peril. Has the party woken up? I know people are agonizing. There's the blame game. A lot of people, you know, saying President Biden shouldn't have run or he waited too long to get out. There's all of that uh, that the, you know, the consultant class needs to be replaced. But is there a really deep uh, thinking or is there deep thinking inside the Democratic Party after such a disastrous election? Well, I cannot speak for the whole party, but I can only speak for myself. But we have to seriously reckon with the results of the election. And keep in mind the trends that are, have been, that are unfolding in 2024 long predate the 2024 election. Back in 2020, Donald Trump made historic inroads among voters of color during the public backlash against the defund the police movement. And he built on those gains decisively in the 2024 election. And so, look, if, if, if the goal is to win elections on Twitter, then you should embrace movements like defund the police. But if the goal is to win elections in the real world, where it matters, then you have to appeal to working class people of color who historically have been the base of the Democratic Party. Who is the leader of the Democratic Party right now? Well, for me, the most important leader for the Democratic Party at the moment is Hakeem Jeffries. And Hakeem has shown us the way forward. You know, New York was a ray of light in an otherwise, de otherwise depressing and despairing election. You know, under the leadership of Hakeem, there was a transformation of the New York State Democratic Party. We won back almost all the congressional seats that we had lost in 2022. Uh, and we wanted the strength of strong candidates like Tom Suozzi, Pat Ryan, Josh Riley, Laura Gillen. And the common thread among all of them is every single one of them ran from the center left. The road to the speakership, the road to the presidency runs not through the far left. It runs through the center left, which is where the most, most of the country is. What do you think of Donald Trump's plan for mass deportations? And he repeated that to Kristen Welker in an exclusive telephone interview yesterday, saying there's just no choice but to move forward, no matter what the price tag. I, I live in fear of what Donald Trump is going to do to our country. Uh, it seems to me he feels more emboldened than he's ever been. Uh, I predict that the second Trump presidency is going to be far more vindictive than the first. And the difference between then and now is that he has absolute immunity. Like he is free to weaponize government against his political rivals. He's free to you know, order prosecutions of his political rivals. And the Supreme Court has said that he enjoys uh, absolute immunity. And I worry that he's going to appoint more justices in the mold of Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito who are going to endanger the fundamental freedoms that we enjoy as Americans. So I fear a second Trump presidency as much as anyone else. You represent such a diverse district, uh, such a melting pot. I know it well. I was born there. Uh, what do you make of the anti-Semitic attacks against Israeli soccer fans in Amsterdam and the anti-Arab chants by the Israelis? Look, I was appalled by what I saw in, in Amsterdam. I, I never thought in my wildest nightmares that I would see a pogrom against Jews 
in the 21st century, like it makes me sick to my stomach. And what is unfolding in Amsterdam did not happen in a vacuum. It's happening in an age of amplified anti-Semitism. Since October 7th, we've seen volcanic eruptions of anti-Semitism on college campuses and on social media platforms. You know, we've seen people utter phrases like globalize the intifada, which is an open invitation to violence against Jews worldwide. And I'm concerned that if we as a country do not stand up and speak out and act with moral clarity against anti-Semitism, then the nightmare for Groms could come here in the United States. Uh, and so we have to act with moral urgency.